professional wrestler? Uh, I got to put my mom over here. If you ask my mom, she'll tell you that at three years old, I was watching wrestling, and I turned to her and said, I want to do this, and she said, absolutely not. Um, the first memory I have of professional wrestling was uh, watching a match of the Rockers against the British Bulldogs. And it was that match that I remember saying to myself at a very, very young age, saying, I, I want to do that. I want to be those guys. Um, and it was at that moment that I made up my mind. Little did I know how possible it was at some point down the road. I mean, I, I was a star baseball player. I was being scouted by different colleges, uh, played football, played ice hockey, and, you know, was always into, into sports. Um, but basically it wasn't until I suffered a few serious injuries through football that uh, my baseball and football careers were kind of taken away from me and the scouts stopped looking at me, which led me to, you know, professional wrestling. You mentioned that your mom wasn't really high on you wanting to be a wrestler. And now that you are a wrestler, how does your mom feel about it now? My mom's my biggest fan. Um, uh, most of my... Um, my home shows are based out of Delaware. I mean, I, I wrestle everywhere, but I got my start in Delaware, and my home is in Delaware as far as professional wrestling is concerned. And, and every time I have a Delaware show or a surrounding show in the um, Pennsylvania area, she's there. And she comes to all of them, and she yells and screams with the rest of the people, and she buys my merchants, and she's amazing. She's my biggest fan. That's awesome to hear. I mean, I, I think we all have had – parents that when we wanted to do something and then they'd be like oh i don't know but once they see the hard work and dedication we put it in you know then it's like okay okay we 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 we, we love you you know we we we, we got you so absolutely um do you remember the first wrestling match you ever had and if so who was your opponent or opponents and what company did you work for at the time? Oh, uh, absolutely, I do. Um, I, I officially debuted in uh, May of 2003, so I'm actually uh, next week, May 11th, will be my 10 year anniversary in professional wrestling. Which, you know, I'm not an idiot and I'm not a mark, so I know that 10 years nowadays, with as often as we're able to perform, isn't really 10 years in the business. Um, but it is my 10-year anniversary next week, and I'm, I'm very excited for it. Um, my first match was um, for Dynamite Championship Wrestling, which was known then as Delaware Championship Wrestling. Uh, it was against a guy by the name of Jeremy Havoc, who later went on to become Jeremy Ron in a tag team with his twin brother uh, known as the Gemini Trojans. I was then known as Twisted Youth, which is the worst name that I could have used, and if, you, if there's any pictures floating around the internet, uh, there might even be some on my Facebook uh, page. It's it's awful. It was an awful gimmick. Hmm. So, um, have you is is that like the last type of situation you dealt with as far as you know promoters what, prefer you go by this gimmick and things didn't work out? No, that was actually my idea to be honest with you. And I was on a different radio show last week and they asked me what my feelings were on, you know, talent using Hot Topic for their wrestling gear nowadays and I hate it. And I, I'm allowed to say that I hate it and that I, you know, tell these young guys that I hate it because I did it. When I first started, when I was Twisted Youth, um, I, I was kind of kayfabe as far as where to get my gear and how to get it and things like that. So I looked to places like Hot Topic, which back then had different stuff in it that, you know, than it has nowadays, and it catered to a different demographic than it does nowadays. Um, but that was my idea, and it sucked. And after the first match, when I came backstage, I had Joey Matthews and Christian York both tell me to my face that it sucked, and I decided that I needed something else. The next, um, the next event that that company had, um, one half of my trainers, Jeff Rocker, told me to just go out there under my real name and uh, you know, see what happens, and we'll just find some, we'll find a name down the road, and just go out there in black tights, and you know, just do it. So I went out there with Zach Connor, and I just had black tights, and you know, I didn't have a silly gimmick or a silly name or anything like that. And instantly, the crowd reacted to it, so it just stuck. And ten years later, I'm still Zach Connor. 
Well, happy uh, soon to be ten year anniversary of your career, and um, you know, it's, it's Thank you. and wrestling is one of those it's one of those careers that you know it's it's not for everybody. It's not it's not for it's it's not for the weak. It's 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 for those strong minded, very determined people. Uh, how do you feel? that you have made it this far in your career? I mean, how do you, what, what's your mindset, you know, with this milestone you have coming up, you, you being 10 years in wrestling? Well, re regarding, regarding the milestone, um, there's a quote that Triple H said one time, and I, I echo it completely, is he was asked back in 2004 when everybody said that he had his reign of terror on TV and he was on TV too much and he was burying talent. And they said, what's next for you since you're on top? And he said that he never feels like he's on top, that he's always proving himself. He's always trying to have the best matches. He's always trying to have the best promos. And that just when he feels like he is on top, he does something and strives further. And that's how I feel. I don't feel like I've achieved a milestone of being in the business by 10 years. I feel like I've been working hard and, and doing doing my thing and learning my craft and keeping my ears open so that 10 more years I can have in the ring. And you said that it's not for everyone. And I, I, I agree with that because I've seen, and I laugh every time I hear it, I've seen indie guys left and right, quote unquote, retire over my last 10 years. Guys that started after me and some that started before me. I don't think there's such a thing as retirement in professional wrestling. And if you look at all of the top guys in history, they never really retire. They might take time off. They might not perform in the ring, but they don't retire. They can't leave the business. When it's in your heart, when it's in your soul, it never leaves you. And I know that sounds stupid to anybody that might be listening who's not a professional wrestling addict or a professional wrestling fan or a professional wrestler themselves. But for anybody who is an addict or a fan or a professional wrestler themselves, they'll know what I'm talking about. And the guys that have the heart, don't ever leave the business because the business never leaves them. Well said, man. Uh, well said. So, do you have any upcoming wrestling shows or events that you'd like to promote that you got coming up? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this weekend I actually have two shows. Um, Saturday afternoon I'll be up in Reading, Pennsylvania, PW World Professional Wrestling. I'm wrestling Drew Budd, who's uh, internationally known. He's one of the top top indie workers uh, around, to be honest with you. He recently made a comeback, um, which is awesome. And we've never touched. In my 10 years in the business, we've never been in the ring together. We've never fought each other. We've never tagged together, nothing. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Uh, later that night, I'll be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for Lancaster Championship Wrestling, which is a phenomenal promotion. They're drawing five, 600 people every show. I wrestled Devon Dudley there just a couple months ago. Um, I'll be wrestling Ed House, who... Uh, was on Monday Night Raw a couple weeks ago, and he shit his pants when Triple H and him went face to face. Uh, I'll be wrestling him that night. That show also has Hacksaw Jim Duggan and uh, the franchise Shane Douglas, one of my inspirations on that show as well. Uh, the next week, my my official 10 year anniversary is with Dynamite Championship Wrestling. It's the 10th annual Honor Cup tournament that that company has. Um, the tournament started 10 years ago as a tribute to one of our fans who, uh, who tragically passed away. And over the years, that tournament has grown to represent our fallen superstars that have passed away as well. Um, and I've never won the tournament. A few years ago, I, I you know, lost in the quarterfinals to Jimmy Anvil Neidhart. Uh, two years ago, um, I lost in the semifinals to um, David Hart Smith, a close friend of mine. And last year, I made it to the finals, and I lost to J.J. Cruz. So it's, it's my 10-year anniversary. There's, there's redemption on my mind. Um, I've won every championship there is in DCW minus the Honor Cup. And this year it's a little bit sweeter because the uh, heavyweight championship is currently vacated, and that will be on the line to the winner as well. Um, so those are some of the uh, main events I have. And then uh, fast forward a little bit to June 1st uh, with a company called Right Coast Pro based out of Newark, Delaware. Um, if you look them up, you'll see that the, the roster is comprised of a lot of old ECWA talents that Jim Kentner used to book, um, the good ones, and uh, a lot of new faces as well. 
and um, JJ, the ring crew guy, is running that company, and they're drawing a solid fan base, and it's a great family promotion. So if you're in the Delaware area, please come check out DCW at dcwprowrestling.com and rightcoastpro.com for Right Coast Pro on June 1st. If you're in Pennsylvania, uh, it's WPW this weekend on Saturday afternoon, and then uh, Lancaster Championship Wrestling, lcwpro.com for uh, Saturday night. That's awesome, man. And, you know, to win that cup and that championship, talk about two birds with one stone. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. It's been over three years since I've held the DCW International Heavyweight Championship. And that's not just a name. That belt has actually been defended um, internationally from the company's existence 10 years ago until now. So there's a lot of history with that championship. And I've, I've held it three times, and I've taken a back seat to a lot of young guys. And I think it's time that the Ripper takes back his throne. That's what I'm talking about. You know, let, let them know, man. Like, 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 I, I'm still here. Like, like, don't, don't, don't forget me. You know, I, I'm, I'm coming for the title. I'm coming for that cup, and uh, nobody's gonna stop me. So, uh, you know, so good for you, man. Uh, Thank you. So, what do you consider? as highlights of your career, like like moments, like maybe a storyline or angle that you may have been a part of, or maybe a championship you may have won, or a match that, that you have had. Uh, what do you consider as highlights of your career? There's, there's so many. I mean, it's hard to, to narrow it down. I mean, with having a 10-year career, um, you know, I've, I've been lucky to have a lot of awesome moments and, and meet a lot of awesome people. I mean, the, the first and foremost, the thing that, that comes to my mind, I mean, is um, the first time I, I, I you know, uh, worked for WWE. I mean, step inside of an arena that holds 20,000 people before the show and to work out in the ring with the Asians, you know, Dean, uh, Dean Malenko and Arn Anderson and uh, Tommy Dreamer and Mike Bucci, Simon Dean at the time, and to learn a craft from those guys and to to then get the chance in front of 22,000 people in the Meadowlands is incredible. I mean, nothing can, can take away that feeling. I mean, um, uh, doing TNA Gut Check this past January in uh, Philadelphia Tower Theater, that was an awesome experience. And, um, I mean, as far as matches, I, I had a uh, three-match series with the franchise Shane Douglas in 2010. And as I said earlier, he's one of my inspirations in this business. And those three matches were some of my most favorites that I've had. And, and even though in the last one I, I tore my ACL, uh, it put me for almost a year, it was still one of the, one of the best nights of my life. Um, driving home with a swollen knee the size of a bowling ball, I had a smile on my face the entire time because I tore the house down for an hour with the franchise. And, you know, it, not a lot of people can say that nowadays. So that meant a lot to me. Um, in 2006, I had a 60-minute Ironman match with Chris Wilde, who's currently uh, one of the top ECWA talents. He's been in multiple Super 8s. He's former ECWA heavyweight champion. and um, We trained together. We debuted together. We teamed together uh, as One Night Stand, as Hard Candy. I mean, we've, we've done everything in this business together. And, you know, he kind of rules the North and I rule the South. And, you know, we've taken over certain areas. Um, but that Ironman match was, was incredible as well. Um, 2004, I was lucky to fly to Germany a few times and compete in a, a lot of awesome shows, including uh, the Glory Cup tournament that I won um, for a now defunct company known as XCW. Uh, they were bought out by WXW Germany, who um, has, has continued the legacy of the Glory Cup, but it's now the 16-carat uh, cup or something like that. Um, I mean, those are just you know some of the moments. Uh, wrestling Devon Dudley was awesome. Uh, becoming a tag team with David Hart Smith for the Hart Rippers, I mean, that's been an awesome moment. And, and then just gaining great friends in this business. Um, Timmy Baltimore, who you might not know, I mean, he used to work as a manager as Timothy B. Idol, but, you know, he's, he's done a lot in this business, and he should have done a lot more. Um, but unfortunately, at, at, during his time in the business, as a manager, uh, nobody was looking for managers, and nobody wanted to embrace managers, and wrestlers didn't want to give anything to managers. Uh, the, the kid was an amazing talent, and, you know, anytime I was lucky enough to work with him, I fed him everything that I could because he deserved it, and he taught me a lot. 
um, you know, um, guys like Christian York, who I've never actually got to wrestle, um, have taught me so much from my first match, you know, telling me that my character sucks and this sucked and that sucked, but this was okay, and, you know, go from here with that. And up until just a few days ago, getting advice on um, my career from him. I mean, it's he's he's one of those guys that you can, you know, uh, you can turn to for true, true advice. Um, I mean, it, there's been so many moments. I mean, those are some of my favorite matches and opponents and people that I've, you know, become friends with in this business. Speaking of uh, TNA, I check, are you in that bracket by any chance? Oh, I was. I was actually eliminated in my bracket last weekend. Um, Chase Stevens, who's a former TNA tag team champ, if anybody's ever heard of him, he was also in my bracket, so it was kind of a no-brainer what was going to happen there. Um, but it was honored just to be involved in that, and it was it gained me a lot of extra exposure, uh, which was fantastic. And if you go on to that the Gut Check website, you can actually watch me versus Devon within that bracket if you click on Zach the Ripper Connor. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have uh, TNA Impact Wrestling, you know, pushing Zach Connor through this gut check and also then being awesome enough to show uh, my match with Devon Dudley from a, a company that's not TNA Impact Wrestling. And you mentioned, you know, your good friends with Christian York. Uh, he's currently, he went through gut check. Uh, uh, actually, he went through gut check on TV. And uh, people forget this, this is not his first time. This is his second time on Impact Wrestling. From the moment he won, um, how does it feel to see him back on Impact? Uh, it feels great. I mean, a lot of people don't even realize that he goes back further than that. I mean, yeah, he competed in TNA in its infancy, but, I mean, you go back, uh, him and Joey Matthews were tearing down the houses in WCW, ECW, and then, you know, they did a few stints with WWE before Joey got signed and, and started working with Johnny Nitro, John Morrison. So, Christian's been around a very long time. Um, you wouldn't know it to look at him, and he doesn't like when you call him it, but he's a grizzled vet. You know, he's he's a grizzled vet through and through, and the guy knows what he's doing, and he deserves the spot that he has there. Um, he, he looks amazing. He's putting on great matches. I mean, just a few weeks after the gut check, he was working Sting in the main event. So, obviously, I'm not the only one who, who thinks and knows these things about Christian York. The guy's, the guy's top-notch. My last question is for people that wants to get in touch with you, social media wise, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Why don't you go ahead and promote your links? Uh, Facebook, if you do slash rated R Romeo or Zach Connor, that'll take you right to my page. Um, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of Facebooking. Um, it's, it's kind of annoying to me to be honest with you. Uh, I, I'd rather just do, you know, hang on Twitter. Um, if you do Twitter, uh, it's Zach Connor, just search for me on there. Hashtag Ripper. Um, you know, I'm 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 a slow I'm a slow starter on the social network thing. So I mean, I only have you know like 26, 2700 followers on there, but I'm getting there. And uh, I try and entertain people as much as possible. A lot of what I talk about is wrestling or comic books or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, you know, um, so you, you won't be bored with what I put on there if you're into. Uh, life away from life. I think the reality of life sucks, so I like to live outside of reality. Well said, man. And, uh, I want to thank you for being on the show this evening. Uh, continue success. Uh, and th again, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it very much, man. Um, I saw that you know, you just celebrated a couple of your anniversary on your show, which is phenomenal. Anytime you want me back, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I'd love to do it, and I hope everybody enjoyed this interview. Thank you, man, and I uh, definitely would like to interview you again, so we'll definitely keep in touch. Uh, you have a good night, man. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. That was Zach the Whipper Connor joining me here on uh, Triple Threat Wrestling Radio.